Hello, I'm your girl Michelle Hope Walker. Welcome to Michelle Hope Walker Ministries. So today is, let's see, what's the date now still? <laughs> it's late on the video. Um, it is, uh, let's see, September, I believe it's still September 20th, 2021. <laughs> September 20th, 2021. Okay, so we're diving right in on the subject of praying for Haitians seeking, um, was it uh, Solemn in U.S. So praying for the Haitians in Del Rio, Texas. There we go, seeking asylum. Um, wow, you! I'm telling you, all, this has been a challenging one. You know, um, again, we stay prayed up. We keep, you know, our joy and our spirit. But at the same time, God does say for us to speak up for justice, for us Christians to speak up for justice. We're not just supposed to go AWOL when challenges come and, and just, you know, act like we don't see them and are blind our eyes. No. <laughs> You know, we pray, we advocate, we do whatever we can do to help people. We do whatever we can do to help people. So yes, I'm titling this praying for Haitians seeking asylum in U.S. Yes, but also we are doing whatever we can do. As they're saying, calling our congressperson, calling our sender, calling and, and, and emailing and tweeting. And we have the ability to go to the meetings in the offices. You know, with COVID times, we really have to watch how we're getting out and where we're going, what we're doing and who we're around. But also putting action to our prayer. As even the Bible, it talks about putting action to our faith. Faith without works is, is dead. You know, faith without works, you, you, if you believe, then act on it. You know, so we have faith that the Haitians can get justice, that the Haitians can be treated fairly. The Haitians who are here in the United States, down in the Del Rio, Texas area, that justice, they can get justice. They will be treated fairly in the name of Jesus. So we speak out, you know, and depending on what a position you are, some people have certain power that what they say and do can really make a big difference. But all of us need to speak out and do whatever we can. And it's how what Martin Luther King said, injustice anywhere is injustice everywhere. You know what I'm saying? So one person that is experiencing injustice. It's like all of us are experiencing injustice. And especially for us black Americans, when I look at that, non-black people, not saying they are black people would help me, but non-black people on horses, our U.S. Border Patrol, who we pay, by the way, you got to remember our tax dollars pay for police and border patrol and all. So that's why some of you are like, why are they speaking out? Because we have the rights, we're paying them. Our tax money pays for these people. So we're not paying for these people to whip Haitians and we're not paying for these people, for us blacks in America, to shoot us. <laughs> we're not paying for that. We're paying for safety, supposedly. That's what we're trying to get. <laughs> But as you all have, have, if you look at all my, uh, some of my other YouTube videos where me as a black woman, when I had a hate crime, and actually it happened to actually end up being a, a, um, an Asian person that was um, committing a hate crime against me, I had a hard time getting police to even take a report. You know what I'm saying? I had a hard time getting police to listen to see it as a hate crime. Even though these people left a hate crime note in my car, what are you doing in my car? You know what I'm saying? So I'm just saying, <laughs> you know, so people are really speaking in yet because we pay for these people. We're paying taxes in all kinds of forms. Of so don't know about you. No, you pay taxes in all kinds of forms and ways. 
And also, it's just not right. You don't mistreat people. I guess the biggest challenge, too, for me is that I, for years, I sit and watch. I'm even one of the ones that's tweeting saying, you know, mis don't mistreat the people and da 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 you know. As far as I'm talking about, you know, the other, the non-black people seeking asylum. When we see how much society and Americans and people will care for them so much, they go down there and take them food. So, so earlier this year when Biden became president and it was a lot of people down there seeking asylum and trying to get into America, they didn't mistreat them. I didn't see them on horses whipping them. <laughs> and by the way, I don't know what difference that the news that thought it would make, but I know my ABC LA News, <laughs> bless their heart, um, was mentioning something about clarifying what it was that they were um, whipping. Um, or was it the ABC News or was it the NBC? I can't, I can't remember which news was. But something about what they were whipping them with, was it a whip? You know, I'm like, it doesn't make a difference what it was. It looked like a whip and they were using it as a whip. And it was like, well, no, it was a horse thing. Regardless, they were using it as a whip. <laughs> That's like an analogy to, you know, them hanging a black person and people arguing about was it a rope or was it a chain? Or it doesn't make a difference. They still hung the person. You know what I'm saying? So it doesn't make a difference what they were hitting the Haitians with. They were whipping the Haitians with something. <laughs> You know, but that's, that's, that's what we have to stay prayed up because that's the demonic spirit. As we've talked about, as I tell you about that demonic spirit we talk about in Ephesians. I got the Bible out, y'all. The Holy Bible, because again, we're coming from the Christian aspect. And this is the ministry right here. So as we look at Ephesians 6 in the Bible, that's the New Testament, where we have talked about that you have to watch it because you have this wickedness in high places. So for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So you have people, you have people that are in power, that are whipping. I mean, it takes you back to slavery days. You're like, what year is this? And then black people just acting like it doesn't matter to you. Wake up. Hello. If they're whipping Haitians in America, black people, because <laughs> that's Haitians are black people. That's why I like the term black because black represents all the black people all over the world. It doesn't limit black people to a certain region or area or country. Haitians, black people. So you have U.S., United States of America, Border Patrol people whipping with whip with whatever they were using, hitting <laughs> Haitians. And this is in America. And when you look at the pictures, and you can put a slave picture back in slavery days and compare the two. I wish somebody, somebody's real, because I know a lot of these people are real good tech people. They can find the pictures and put them side by side. Somebody find the picture, put them side. I mean, it's like, really? In 2021? But that's why we have to stay prayed up. Because yes, there's wickedness in high places. And bless in the name of Jesus. Thank God for Yamisha, Alcindor, and um, April D. Ryan. Because they were on them at that White House press conference today. Oh, yes, they were. Jen Pasaki, because she's like the White House um, spokesperson. You know, but Yamisha kept saying, we see the pictures of them whipping Haitians. And Jen kept saying, the White House, or she kept saying, well, we have to see what the circumstance. And she's been, to, and then she happened to mention, we seen them in the morning. We're trying, I'm sitting here like, so y'all seen them whipping Haitians in the morning and the Biden administration still hasn't done anything about it because that's what Yamisha kept saying. Yamisha's like, but what are y'all going to do? 
I mean, it's not enough to just say, you know, what, what were you going to do? <laughs> Thank you, Yamisha. <sighs> oh, my gosh. And so that's what so we got to pray. In the name of Jesus, I'm telling you as a Christian, it is hard and it is challenging. But this is what we are supposed to do, you all. Proverbs 31. Proverbs 31. Don't just talk about the, the um, what they like to say, the proverb woman. The... <laughs> And wisdom but Proverbs 31 talks about open thy mouth. Proverbs 31, 8 verses 8 and 9 talks about open thy mouth, judge righteously and plead the cause of the poor and the needy. Verse 9, Proverbs chapter 31 verse 9, that's in the Old Testament, verse 9, open thy mouth. Judge righteously and plead the cause of the poor and needy. See my shirt? And this right here is from the film, Just Mercy. And this is Brian Stevenson. Somebody has to speak. When others are quiet. <laughs> So I'm reading it backwards because I'm looking in here backwards. But you know what I'm saying? So we got to open our mouth. Christians, people that love and praise God, we got to open our mouth. You know, this theory of people, you know, feeling like, well, you know, that's the government's problem. That's what the, that's not my problem. I'm like, and don't get me wrong. Yes, we stay focused on our goals and the things God is calling and telling us to do. Yes. But. You still can stop for a moment and speak about justice or do something to help. <laughs> because you know what happens is when you don't do nothing to help, since the next minute you realize it's at your door. It's at your door. See, some people, when um, the police brutality against blacks was going on and the killings of blacks here in America going on, a lot of times a lot of people weren't involved until it hit their door, until it knocked on their door and their relative or their loved one or their child or their daughter got shot by the police. Now they want to get involved. See, we got to be involved already in some form or fashion. Now, don't get me wrong. Some people, that is their particular call. And they're involved in this movement day and night, 24-7. Thank God for them. You know, but I guess the key point I'm saying is just don't ignore it. Just don't act like it's not your problem. Especially as for us black people. And we're watching them whip Haitians. What do you think they're going to do to us? Which, which is I was on social media and reading with some of, because, uh, you know, they've already sent some Haitians back. And so as I was reading different comments off of, of different um, social media, as you know, and um, I want to say maybe this person was Haitian, but I know they were talking about, you know, um, well, you see how they do their own black people in their own country. They were talking about United States. So what do you think they're going to do to Haitians in the United States? And I was like, wow, but true. But true, <laughs> but true. We over here still fighting for our lives and we were born here in America. Taxpayers here in America, um, you know, and right, we are still over here fighting for our lives, which is sad because we shouldn't be, we shouldn't have to, but we are. But still doesn't make it right that Americans, are mistreating Haitians. It's not right. They are seeking asylum just like all the other non-black people have been doing. And I have not seen them being whipped by anyone. I have not seen them just leaving them out there starving. And we're the human um, humanitarian people. Usually you have a whole lot of people, even churches, taking food down to the people on the border and looking out for them. And then you have the people, you know, that's just even the media. Sometimes you have the media that's caring for them. Like, oh my gosh, this is so sad. Where's the care and the compassion for the Haitians? 
like they've had for all of the other non-black people at the border. See, if I had not seen all the care and the compassion and the love that they've been giving people all year and then when, when Trump was in office and the people were just so worried about the people at the border and was just, oh my gosh, praying for the people at the border and down there for the people. And then when Biden came out, it was all these people at the border and the people were just still, you know, going down there showing them love and yes, let them in and, and all this. See, see, I seen that. I seen that. I watched it on TV. I'm sure you did too. We, we watched that. We seen it. So for me to see all this love and care for other people seeking asylum here in the United States. And then to see them mistreat and give no care and compassion to black people at the border. Haitians, and they even say some Africans in the there, and other black people from different uh, various countries. I'm like, oh my gosh. I mean, to me, it's so disheartening. It's so disappointing. When I say disheartening, that our, that our America, that United States would do this to Haitians and the other black people down there at that border. How dare you? I mean, how could you? It's blatant racism. We see all the time. Right now, we see them flying in. Folks. Non-black folks. Flying them in. While they're flying Haitians out, they're flying <laughs> certain people in. So it's just blatant racism. And we all see it before. No, there's no excuse. I know that was Alejandro, or you know, our DHS person was sitting there talking about, well, you know, and it's a problem for the locals. I'm like, wait a minute now, all these, all oh, the people that have been at the border, non black people at the border, beginning of 2021, because they felt like, well, we could get in because now Biden's in and all this, and how accommodating the United States was, how accommodating the Biden administration has been to non-black people at the border. I'm like, what is really going on? So to see this racism right in front of our face towards black people, towards the Haitians. It's, it's just, it's disheartening. It's disappointing. And it's embarrassing. As a black American, it is so embarrassing that our government is treating the Haitians like this. And again, it's a warning sign to us black people that, you know, it's almost like they're using the Haitians to remind us to, I guess, to try to tell us to stay in our place. So yes, we pray. And it takes a lot of prayer in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Woo! Because in these times, we still love. See, God still wants us to love. Now he wants us to speak up and stand up for justice. But yes, he still wants us to love. We still love. We don't want to have any um, malice in our hearts against people. Any anger in our hearts. We still love, but we still speak up for justice. Even those that are mistreated, we pray for them people, on them horses, whipping Haitian people. How, you know, because you didn't whip, as I seen somebody post a post, you didn't whip your people when they were crossing that border. Because there's something we have to, we, we got to pray for this racism in our country. And there's racism, a lot of racism. You have a lot of Latinos that are racist against blacks. And so you're right there on the text where a lot of the patrols, a lot of the folks are Latino folks. And even Latinos, some of my Latino friends have told me, they'll tell you in a minute. That you have a lot of Latino people that do not like black people. They do not like, they, they say they even have challenges of the lighter Latino people not liking the dark skinned Latino people. So I believe that has a lot of play in to why they're talking negatively about the Haitians as they're calling them barbaric. 
whipping them. So not only do black people got to deal with racism from our other races, which is, is so interesting because we black people are always the ones to help people. We're always the ones that when the teams of different folks are down at the border, we're, we're always the ones that are like, you know, let's help them. Oh, that's sad, you know. But then when it's our black people down there, oh, people not trying to give them compassion. People not trying to care for them. Now, I'm not saying all Latinos because, again, there's some very good people of all races. And there are people that are not racist. There are a lot of Latinos that are not racist. And the reason why I say I point that race out is because that's a lot of what you're seeing on TV. Look, look at the TV on yourself. <laughs> In that Del Rio, Texas area, that are the ones that have the power, the authority, and control. Even our DHS person is non-black and of another race. There's no challenge with that, and that's fine and okay. Like I said, I love everybody, but I'm like, treat people fair. So you see that going on. And, you know, so we just have to pray. You know, and I really right now can relate with the Martin Luther King thought and praying. Praying, but yet action. And standing up for justice, speaking up for justice, doing what we can. So if you are near that area, if you can help provide food to the people, because they're saying they're not getting enough food. So that's where you see, while, you know, the, the uh, U.S. Border Patrol people that's whipping the Haitians. If you notice, the Haitians were carrying, they were carrying food because they were saying they had to go get food because their family and their people were starving right there and also texas del rio texas can move the people other places it's not that the haitians are just deciding oh let's just stand in the bridge that is the only farther they're letting them go you know so you really got to watch these scenarios and the stories you hear because they don't be the true story that's why my girl um annabelle i love me some annabelle munez at ABC7, I love me too, because she's fair. And she really speaks up about injustice. And I posted her on my Instagram. My Instagram is Michelle Hope Walker Speaks. Michelle Hope Walker Speaks. That's my Instagram. You can go on there and then I have it where you can click on her story and see. Because then she has the attorney on there talking about it and, 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 and putting it again into focus words. This is really relating to racism. Because how have you let all these non-black people seeking asylum and treated them right and let them in with no problem and you didn't fly them back home? But now that it's black people at the border, Haitians at the border, all of a sudden it's a whole different treatment and the treatment is very negative. See, I like the comparison, not the comparison in the sense that, well, oh, I look better than you, don't. not that type of comparison. But injustice, when you see one race being treated kind and nice, and then you see the black race dealing with the same thing that this other race is dealing with, but there's a whole different treatment to the black race, and it's negative and not kind. And see, this is what we have seen. We've seen where they have treated non-black people at the border trying to get in, seeking asylum, treated so much more better than they are treating the Haitians. So again, as Christians, we have to pray. We have to pray and we have to speak up in the name of Jesus. We have to pray because again, we want to love. We don't want to hate anybody. We don't want to, you know, we pray. We pray in the name of Jesus. That all the humanitarian type people will go down to the border and help. You know, and then people all of a sudden now, Texas is concerned about COVID. They've been concerned about COVID the whole since COVID been going on. <laughs> and 
And also when the non-black people were at the border and people were taking food down there and going down there to see them and check them and giving them stuff, it was COVID times then. That didn't stop them from going down there. As a matter of fact, that was even before vaccine times. That people were still going down there, making sure that non-black people at the border who were seeking asylum were good and everything was going good with them and they were cared for. Now, it's black people at the border, Haitians, now people talking about, well, you know, it's COVID times. What? <coughs> so I pray in the name of Jesus, I'm going to do one of them, them uh, prayers to T.D. Jakes, so I rebuke every witch, hex, evil, everything <laughs> in the name of Jesus that is trying to come against the Haitians that are at the border seeking asylum in the United States. I rebuke any person. I rebuke any negative treatment that anybody would try to, to do to bring to us. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. And God, you give them favor. That the favor of God will be on the Haitians at the border. That good people will just start pouring out, helping to make sure they have plenty of food, plenty of hygiene. There's enough bathrooms there. There's enough hygiene. So there's a lot that there's shelter for them. And I pray in the name of Jesus, the Biden administration will stop shipping them back to Haiti. To Haiti. Because even when I looked on social media, even the Haitian people were like, well, what are you sitting back here for? <laughs> you know, that's what, like, we don't have anything. I mean, you know. So, God, I'm just praying. And we just pray. So, we pray and we act. We pray and we act. We do whatever we can do. Some of you celebrities and people of money, they got some planes and, and got stuff. Fly that plane down there. And drop off some food and hygiene. You know what I'm saying? Clothes. You know, I have a mouth. I thank God for my mouth. <laughs> and I use it to speak up <laughs> as much as I can. I don't have the money that you got, but I got a good mouth to help rally up the troops. <laughs> I said the troops, the people, to help the people. <laughs> So again, you know, and you all know I'm a comedian personality and everything. So when you hear me, you know, um, you know, so I give things, I, I say things and I talk about things in a sarcastic type manner. And when I'm talking and you may hear a giggle, so it's not that I'm laughing at the matter. It's just that this is so ridiculous and they're treating these people so wrong that I can't believe it. She almost laughed to stop from crying. You're just like, what is really going on down there? And then the key point, I mean, because at least even if the Biden administration and our president and vice president, if they would do something, at least that would make me feel somewhat better about it. But when they're just letting them do this in Del Rio, Rio, Texas, to the Haitian people, you're like, what is really going on? And it like puts the rest of us black people on notice that mm, you better watch it. You see what they letting them do down there to black people. In our own country. But again, we pray. So you all pray in action. Pray in action. I'm your girl, Michelle Hope Walker. Um, again, keep watching the YouTube videos. Uh, Michelle Hope Walker. Uh, my Twitter, Hope underscore speaks. Facebook, Michelle Hope Walker speaks, period. Listen. Instagram, Michelle Hope Walker speaks. And if you're not saved. Ask God to come into your heart today. Are you God? I love you. I want to have that relationship with you. You know, come to him. Because I'm telling you, it's my relationship with God that even in the midst of seeing this injustice, I can't stand to see people mistreated. And seeing this injustice, that I'm able to, you know, still keep a composure, still stay loving, still, you know, love everybody. You know, because it's not all the people in that race that's mistreating the Haitians. It's those particular people. I've learned that. You know, you look at it's those particular people that are actually the people and the names. So that's why it's good to put names to the people who are actually doing the mistreatment treatment. Because it's not everybody in that race is mistreating the Haitians down there and whipping the Haitians down there. But, you know, so we just pray. 
And God helps us to stay loving and stay kind. And God helps us to speak up for injustice to give us that boldness to speak. So I'm your girl, Michelle Hope Walker, and we're praying for the Haitians.